As the Tory leadership race hobbles into its home straight, looking like a cross between a Carphone Warehouse Regional Awards Ceremony and The Apprentice if it was on Channel 5, let's look at the candidates and some of the hysterical reactions to them. The lineup is a reminder that the Tories have the most ethnically diverse cabinet in British history, proving that ethnicity is no barrier to forming a terrible government. This diversity has brought out the race-baiting grifters on the left, furious that the Tories are beating them at diversity without even trying, and terrified that an ethnic prime minister would undermine their careers, which are based on stirring up racial division. Activist Shola Moss Shogbamimu threw a lefty word salad at candidate Kemi Badenoch, saying that her power-grabbing ambition is rooted in discrediting and delegitimizing anti-racism efforts, denying systemic racism, whitewashing the British Empire, and enabling white supremacy against black people. Thanks Shola, I've nearly filled in my lefty bingo card and now only need transphobic disenfranchisement and colonialist mindset to get a full house. Dr Shola finished by saying that Kemi should crawl back into her mother. Charming. Maybe Dr Shola is upset that Kemi has nearly reached the highest office in the land despite humble beginnings, putting herself through two degrees by working in McDonald's, whereas Dr Shola is the privileged daughter of a Nigerian royal who came to the UK to make a career out of telling us how racist we are. So Ella Braverman dropped out quickly, but not before the parliamentary spokesperson for the Liberal Democrats tweeted this abuse at her. Get your immigrant offspring face off my screen. Wow. And lefties are supposed to be the good guys? Lefty legal wonk Jolyon Mom, who previously showed the true face of modern lefties when he beat a fox to death while wearing his wife's kimono. But don't worry, he announced his pronouns and, and took the knee afterwards, so it was okay. Well, he said to Rishi, do you think the members of your party are ready to elect a brown man as leader? Well, yeah, obviously they are jolly and they're almost all brown. Some of them are brown women. The Tories have already had two female prime ministers and Labour have had none. So who's the racist misogynist really? Activist Femi made a video using lots of big words to explain why having mostly ethnic minority candidates is in fact proof that the Tories are racist and oppress ethnic minorities. In this country, if you've got a name that sounds like it's from Africa or the Middle East, you have to send between 70 and 90% more job applications to get a job offer. Kimmy Badnock is definitely supporting racism. If you've got a name that sounds African or Middle Eastern, you won't get a job. I mean, let's see the names of the Tory candidates. Rishi Sunak, Nadim Zahawi, Suele Braverman, Kemi Badenoch, Raymond Chishti. Femi shows that the left are so twisted that they think that a black prime minister would actually damage the fight against racial inequality. No, it wouldn't. It would damage the careers of race-baiting grifters who depend on the concept of inequality, like Femi and Dr Shola. Anyway, let's pour some malt liquor on the pavement for the candidates that have fallen before one of them drinks it and fondles someone's buttocks. I know Boris wasn't the perfect Prime Minister, but some of the people who thought they'd be a better option are insane. Grant Shapps made his money running a string of dodgy companies. He ran a pyramid scheme called the 2020 Challenge under fake names. He marketed a toolkit that cost $497 and promised earnings of $20,000 in 20 days. Upon purchase, the toolkit was revealed to be an ebook advising the user to create their own toolkit and recruit 100 joint venture partners to resell it for a share of the profits. He had another business, How To Core, that sold software, enabling people to plagiarise other people's blogs to sell Google ads, which was blacklisted by Google, because that goes against their terms and conditions, making the business model worthless. And it had the nastiest looking web content since Cardi B's OnlyFans. Man, these images are giving me a migraine. Every convention of graphic design is broken with these colours merge and clash, pictures are scaled to blocky resolution, people are half cut out, everything's everywhere. Run the country! This fanny can't even run a Facebook page! This post, which got three likes, asked people to join him in Lord Sugar. Closer inspection reveals he's actually just tweeting at Lord Sugar. Lord Sugar isn't there. I'll explain why that's not quite the same thing in my next video, which is a collaboration with Charlotte Church and the Dalai Lama. Grand Shapps actually threatened to sue someone who said he had a second business and used pseudonyms, until it turned out that he did, in fact, have a second business and used pseudonyms. Nadim Zahawi also has some suspected business dodginess and has been investigated by HMRC, the Serious Fraud Office and the National Crime Agency. 
I mean, it's a shame Pablo Escobar isn't still alive to add some trustworthiness to the lineup. Mr. Zahavi is one of the richest politicians in government because he hasn't let the government take any of his money. He helped found polling company YouGov, but sadly he couldn't convince them to put him in the lead and he's dropped out, which is a shame because he wanted lower taxes. And maybe Tory politicians would be more likely to pay tax here instead of in the Cayman Islands if our taxes weren't so astronomically high. Rishi Sunak is unlikely to maintain Tory support in the Red Wall given that he sneers at working class people. I have friends who are aristocrats, I have friends who are upper class, I have friends who are, you know, working class, but I'm not working class, but I mix and match and then I go to see kids from an inner city state school and tell them, you know, to apply to Oxford and talk to them about people like me and then I shock them at the end of chatting to them for half an hour and tell them I was at Winchester and you know my best friends is from Eton or whatever you know and and then they're like oh okay. On the plus side he wants low tax but on the downside he only wants low tax for him and his family. His wife avoided paying tax in the UK for years by using the non-domicile loophole. I want a prime minister who's low tax for me as well as himself. His vision of a high tax, high spend government will turn away core conservative voters but might win over Jeremy Corbyn as it's basically what he always wanted. Sajid Javid appeared to launch his leadership bid in a sauna and called for more tax transparency but refused to reveal the location of his own offshore trust which would have been tax transparency. Labour politicians have criticised Javid for becoming a politician to line his own pockets because he made 300 grand consulting for his former employers. Listen, Sajid Javid took a 98% pay cut to become a politician. If he was in it for the money, he wouldn't be in it. I love how the left hold up their complete inability to make any money as something to be proud of rather than as evidence of their uselessness to society. A multi-millionaire becoming an MP is wrong according to lefties, but a left-wing politician becoming a millionaire as a lifelong MP isn't wrong. Liz Truss tried LARPing as Margaret Thatcher in a pussy boat, but she forgot to copy Thatcher's gravitas and decisiveness, coming across as clunky and wooden in the debates. Tom Tugendhat looks like Alan Carr, so he's out, and Jeremy Hunt is boring, so he's out too. As the Tory leadership race gets whittled down and enters its home straight, it looks like it's going to be between Penny Morden or Rishi Sunak, and I'd like to apologise right now to Penny Morden if she's offended by me using the word straight because it implies a binary world where men and women exist. She insisted that she hadn't supported self-ID. That's the move to allow people to legally identify as whatever gender they want. So for example, a woman like me could be legally recognised as a woman without the need for any medical evidence, which has problems as biological males have been identifying as women and gaining access to female-only spaces, such as prisons where they commit sexual assaults. Anyway, Penny denied that she'd supported self-ID, but as Equalities Minister, she had recommended reform to the Gender Recognition Act that would demedicalise the process and, in effect, bring in self-ID. So she lied. However, she is quite hot. Self-ID isn't the only scientifically dubious thing she's recommended. Penny repeatedly advocated use of homeopathy on the NHS. Homeopathy is based on extremely diluted substances, much as the Tory leadership contest has one good candidate dissolved in a sea of mediocrity. Yes, I'm talking about Kemi Badenoch. She's the best type of conservative. No nonsense, low tax, low spend, pro-individual freedoms, pro-free markets and pro-sustainable immigration. I was lucky enough to see her speak at the House of Lords last week and she was a breath of fresh air. She'd win the red wall, she'd galvanise the conservative grassroots vote and she'd take Britain in the right direction. So she's probably already out by the time you see this video. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please send it to your racist left-wing friends. And if you'd like to support me making these videos, you can become a Patreon from as little as £3 a month. You can even join the Labour Party for that. You can help me buy sausages and get early access to these videos and a Patreon-only podcast with a criminal barrister. Thanks for listening. I'll be Leo Kears. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.